Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys. This is another episode of the Android game development series and in this video we are going to learn how to use textures in OpenGL ES. So basically in OpenGL a texture is like an image that we can apply onto a mesh. And uh, to get started we can create a new class called texture and here I have created this in a separate class so that we can reuse this easily and the texture management is simpler. And uh, here the way we will use this uh, texture is that we will have a constructor and this just takes an asset manager. Now this A asset manager is what we will use to actually get the uh, file and this is used, uh, you know, this is the way we use, uh, we get the assets in Android. So basically anything you put in this asset folder will be accessible through this asset manager interface. And we'll also take a uh, the actual file path that we need to access. And then we'll also have like a kind of destructure for this. And then we'll have a bunch of utility methods for getting the width height or the ID of this texture. And the width height are just stored as ints while the ID is a GLU int. Like most other OpenGL objects, uh, this is also a GLU int. And in texture.cpp, uh, you can see that for the actual uh, parsing of the texture, we'll use the stbimage.h header. And this is open source, you can just go ahead and get, uh, uh, copy this basically from the, uh, you know, uh, GitHub uh, repository, I'll have a link to it in the description, and you can just paste the file into your project. And before including this, you must define this STB image implementation to actually create the implementation for all of the functions there, because this is a header only, uh, you know, library. And in the, uh, in the constructor, we'll begin by getting the asset, this uh, by using the asset manager underscore open uh, function. And we'll pass it our asset manager along with the uh, C string of our path, uh, file path. And then for the actual mode in which we want to open the asset, there are a bunch of these, for example, uh, unknown about uh, which has no information about how the data will be accessed. Then we have got random reading sequentially. And uh, uh, finally, we've got uh, buffer, which is the one that we need, which will just return like all of the data in a single read only buffer. And uh, after we, can, we have done that, we have loaded the asset, this will return an A asset pointer which will store in this asset and then we can get the length of this asset and the uh, uh, buffer by using the a asset get buffer and get length functions uh, and if our buffer is null that means that the file failed to load for some reason and then we can just uh, give an error and then we can close this uh, asset uh, before returning from this function because we don't want to do anything else here since buffer is null and uh, once we have got the buffer we can uh, use the stbi underscore load from memory function and this can be used to uh, basically we can pass it our buffer but our buffer is a void pointer by the way so we'll need to cast it joint 8 underscore t and stbi will basically treat this buffer as a single file and it will load that uh, load the image from this buffer and then we'll give it the length of the buffer and after that we'll give it the uh, addresses or the pointers to our width and height so that it can you know set the width and height to the correct value and then for the number of channels this is the number of channels in the file we don't really care about how many channels the file contains, so we are going to just pass null pointer here. And then for the uh, last argument, we are going to tell uh, STBI that we need to uh, have four channels in our file. That means we need to have a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and an alpha channel. So we need to specify uh, four here. After that, we can use a asset close to just close the asset. And once we have done that, we can check if our data was uh, null. And if it was, that means that something went wrong. So we can just give an error and then we can use the STBI failure reason to actually get why this failed. And then we can return from this constructor. Otherwise, if everything worked, we can go ahead and use GL gen textures to actually generate the texture uh, like uh, uh, for our ID here. And then we can use GL bind texture to bind this texture here, like GL texture 2D, and we can give our ID here. And once we have done that, we can use GL text storage 2D. And this function will basically allocate the storage for our texture. And uh, uh, the way we uh, you can do it uh, basically in two ways. When one is to use the GL text image 2d which will allocate the memory and it will also uh, set the memory to the texture data but we don't want to use that because uh, that uh, creates like a mutable texture which means we can change it and we can reallocate the storage for it and it leads to a bunch of problems so it's much uh, better to just use gl text storage 2d instead to, to declare an immutable texture because that's what we want we actually are not going to change this texture at all so we are going to pass GL text storage 2D here. For the target, we must have the same target here as the target that we bound our ID to. And then for the number of levels, this is the number of mipmap levels. We are not concerned with this now. We only want one level for our main texture image. Then for the format, this needs to be a sized format. That is GL RGBA 8, which means that we are going to have 8-bit entries. And those entries are going to have the red, green, blue, and alpha components. 
and then we are going to pass our width and height. Now this will create the uh, storage for our texture but we still need to assign this to our data that we have got. So to do that we will use GL text sub image 2D and we will pass our GL texture 2D here and the next argument is the level that we want. We only have one level so we will pass the zero index here. For the X and Y offset we just want to set the texture to the top left corner. We want to basically override the whole texture so we will pass zero for the offset. Then for the width and height we will pass the same width and height. And now this format is not a sized format it's just a general format. So we want to say GL RGBA 8 we will just say GL RGBA. And then for the, the type is actually a separate argument for which we will pass gl unsigned byte. And whatever you pass here must match uh, whatever the data is stored in uh, unless you want some uh, problems with the um, you know open gl driver trying to access memory that's not uh, uh, you know uh, correct so it might lead to a segmentation fault if this is wrong. For example if this is like gl unsigned int it will try to access more memory than which is available and it will lead to problems. So this must uh, match the type of the data here and then finally we will pass a pointer to the actual data and one more thing that once we are done using the data we should use stbi uh, f image free and we can just pass our data here to actually free it so in the end very end we in the destructor we can just use gl delete textures to actually delete our texture and that's pretty much all we need to get the texture set up now we just need to uh, you know actually use it uh, to draw something and in render.h we have got a unique pointer to a texture here so that we can you know uh, create it and then we can use it i used a unique pointer here because uh, when we are going to have many different textures uh, and most of them are going to be like dynamically allocated so we can like uh, change this into a like texture manager system later on but for now we only have one texture so we are going to just keep it here like this and uh, uh, I'm going to go under render.cpp and in here you can see that uh, uh, we, uh, we, we are going to change a bunch of things so first of all we need to change our uh, vertex uh, structure here and uh, uh, instead of just specifying the vertices as an array of floats we are going to actually declare a struct and this struct is going to contain two glm vec 2s one is the position and the other is the text codes and this text uh, texture coordinates are basically represent which part of the texture each vertex is supposed to access and uh, the OpenGL will automatically interpolate between those texture coordinates and we'll use those to get the actual value from the texture. So these texture coordinates we need to pass to our shader so we are going to have them stored here as VEC2 as well and these are just going to 0 0 for the uh, this is actually the bottom left corner uh, in OpenGL 0 0 represents bottom left corner for textures and then we have got 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 here for all of the other corners as well. And here we now we have got our vertex structure as like an array of vertices instead of just an array of floors. This makes it a lot easier to manage some stuff. And when uh, we are specifying our vertex array object, what we do is for the stride we always just pass the size of vertex. And uh, for the offset we now use the offset off operator so that you know if we rearrange the elements in the struct nothing breaks. So we just get the offset of the vertex uh, and the position. And then uh, for the texture coordinates we use the array index one. And this time we use offset off with the vertex and text scores and this gives us a correct offset and we need to cast this to a void pointer to actually use it and that should allow us to get the mm, texture coordinates in our shader so you can see in our shader here we can have another attribute here at location one which is the uh, texture coordinates and we just need to give these out as is to the fragment shader so you have an out vector text scores here and we just pass those as is and once we do that inside of the fragment shader we can take these in like uh, uh, texture coordinates and now we need to access our actual texture for that we use a uniform sampler 2d we are just going to call it text here and a sampler 2d is basically just like a two-dimensional texture and then we can actually use this texture by using the built-in texture function in glsl and the first argument is going to be our sampler 2d or the texture that we actually need to sample from and then the second argument is are going to be the coordinates which is where we want to sample the texture from and re uh, you should remember that uh, regardless of the size uh, in pixels of the actual texture whenever we use texture coordinates these are always from 0 to 1 unless you you know manually change them through some extensions or some other stuff uh, by default they are just uh, 0 to 1 
and uh, uh, we are going to just use that and assign the result directly to our fragment color and this by the way returns a vec4 so we can just use that and uh, once you are uh, done with that this is pretty much all we need to do uh, in our uh, shader to actually use textures and now uh, to we need to actually assign the textures and uh, well, first of all we are going to go here and uh, we are going to use gl uniform 1i to actually assign the uniform location uh, and uh, the, in order to assign texture variables we use gl uniform 1i to specify the index of the location uh, that this texture is supposed to access and then uh, we use some other mechanism to actually specify that uh, to actually bind the texture to that location and then we can access it that way so you do not pass the texture id to the uniform function instead you pass a location or uh, you could say a binding point and then we bind the texture to that uh, texture uh, point or the binding point we bind the texture to that and then opengl will automatically use the texture bound to it so we'll use gl uniform 1i we'll use gl get uniform location we'll get the texture location actual uh, location of the text uniform and then we're going to just set it to zero which means that we want to access the texture winding at texture zero and uh, then we are going to uh, actually create our texture by just using make unique texture and for the asset manager you can get it in the app activity asset manager so the android app structure uh, consists of like uh, an activity which is a game activity and if you open that up you can see that this consists of an a asset manager all right so once you have done that we can basically we've got our texture initialized and you can uh, just print the size of the texture if you want to and we are just uh, opening up the android robot.png file and this is if you started with the uh, you know uh, android uh, game development kit like uh, uh, template then you should already have this otherwise you can just put any image inside of your assets folder and access that this is like this image here now technically we don't have to do this uh, GL active texture part here but we are going to do it anyways uh, just to uh, you know uh, remember that we are actually assigning this texture here so we just set that active texture to GL texture 0 here and then we are going to bind our texture to that texture our texture is already bound to this target and by default the active texture usually is 0 but just to be on the safe side uh, we are going to just set the active texture to 0 then we are going to bind our texture to that target and now since this is texture 0 and we set 0 here when we try to access this text here we'll access the texture that we bound to this target so you can see we have got our texture here it's uh, working correctly and you can see that we get the texture but you can see instead of being transparent where it needs to be it is actually black that is why by default alpha blending or you, uh, you know transparency uh, blending or anything is not enabled in OpenGL so to do that we actually need to enable it manually uh, which is not too difficult to do we can use GL enable to enable basically any OpenGL optional function or something we we can use GL blend to enable the blending functions. Now we also need to specify to OpenGL how we need to blend it with the GL blend func uh, function. And uh, uh, first, it takes the source factor. For the source factor, uh, this is the uh, this is you know the factor that uh, our source image color gets multiplied with. We just want to multiply it with the alpha of the source and. Uh, uh, we, the second argument is uh, what the destination factor gets multiplied with and for that we want to use GL1 minus source alpha and this is just standard alpha blending and if I go ahead and run it now you can see that now uh, we get our uh, Android logo here and uh, the rest of the image is now completely transparent. So anyways guys this is going to be pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one in which we'll take our OpenGL render forward and uh, allow having adding more features to it so that we can actually use this to uh, in a game uh, and uh, stay tuned for that. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one and share this video with other people as well and bye.